Here's what's coming up on the show. It's like, remember that you're the most important person in the room. Um, You call all the shots and we are all there to ideally listen to and follow your directions. And yeah, like sometimes people get sore, people get tired and the thing is done before everyone got to go. And that's just fucking life. And like these guys will, they'll deal with it. It'll be okay. Definitely good to keep the lube around. You know, there's definitely a lot of moments where like someone calls out lube and then like there's like three guys scrambling around looking for the lube and no, that's a cuck job. That's That's a a cuck job. job. Yeah. I think there needs to be more of more gangbangs where it's women fucking a guy. Um, I agree. We should start by planning mine and we can test it out from there. (laughs) No, but um, this is the, the catch. Women pegging the guy. This is the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, for the passionate, and for the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm your host, Venus. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have Billy Brosita, who is a comedian and host of the Man Whore Podcast, joining me. And we're going to talk about planning a gangbang like a champ. And as you can imagine, this show is going to be the perfect combination of hilarious and educational. But first, I have a few announcements. The first one is about Crystal Welch. She is going to be going live with myself in the Queen's Quarters community. This is going to be the first time that we'll be testing out this meetup feature, which seems pretty cool. It seems like a live hangout kind of thing where you guys can hang out and join in and we're we're going to have a discussion. We're going to be talking about her column that she wrote for Medium and it's called Monogamy is Dying and Women are Killing It. So we're going to be talking about that, and she really wants to have some feedback from all of you. So join in. It's free. The link is in the show notes for today. Oh, and it's going to be April 4th. It's a Thursday. It's going to be at noon Pacific time. That's 3 p.m. Eastern. My second announcement is also about Crystal Welch. Her and I teamed up. We did a rate and review bonus episode where we we went through all of the comparison picks that were submitted on a Twitter thread that I put out there asking for comparison picks. We went through each and every one of them and we rated and reviewed them. And it was, as you can imagine, hilarious and It's kind of savage. But anyway, I put it all together and we just put it out as a bonus episode. So if you are a member of any one of the supporter tiers on venuscuckoldress.com, then you got access to that bonus episode on the private podcast. Or if you subscribe to Apple Podcast subscriptions, you got it there too. Last but not least, I'm talking about Doc Chocolate. <laughs> so the pillow talk that was, I think it was like mm, the beginning of March, uh, I had uh, Doc Chocolate, we were on the show, and we were talking about <laughs> some something that was brought up. I thought, I said, wouldn't it be fun if Doc Chocolate tried chastity? <laughs> and so... <laughs> He agreed, and uh, he's going to actually try chastity for a period of time, and it's going to (laughs) be so interesting, (laughs) and we're going to talk about it on the next Pillow Talk. We have not set a date for it yet, but we will soon, so make sure you check the events page on venuscuckoldress.com because (laughs) that's going to be, it's going to be so good. It's going to be great. Okay, that's that's it for announcements. Let's jump into the show today. Here we go. All right, let's get started. So joining me on the show today, I have Billy Presida, who I have been a guest on his show. He This is the first time being a guest on my show. Billy Presida is the host of the Man Whore podcast, and that is Sex Positive Conversations, and he's celebrating his 500th 
episode Ten, has it been 10 years that you've 10 been... years holy yeah. shit okay so welcome to the show billy uh thanks for having me yeah the uh the the 500th episode was last year and and you might like this i i went down on five different women and then after i left the room they each reviewed me on mic <laughs> i love that so much because i've done a few bonus episodes uh for this podcast where i had people send in their favorite cuckold porn videos and i thought i, I was going to discover some amazing stuff and so i was all excited to review them and everything like that and they sucked like they, they were shit so <laughs> what makes a a bad cuckold video oh god so many things um <laughs> sometimes it's just like the whole plot is terrible or um, a lot of the times it's this really fake, squeaky, moany, breathe through your teeth thing that the women do that guys don't realize. I think that that's like really, really, really fake and performative. But for me, when I'm watching it, I'm like, uh, no, I can't. She's like, ooh, ee, ooh, ooh. and he's just, he's literally just like pulling her panties down and she's like, ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's just not realistic. Like, no. it, and, and the reason the guy falls for it is because he's clearly never been in that situation. I just think guys, guys are really simple. And so it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't take a lot. So. <laughs> But but the thing is, like, if you watch, like, certain, like, fantasy pornos, but they're fantasies you've also done, such as a gangbang, I don't know. I'm kind of watching it being, like, unrealistic. I can't really – I can't emotionally, erotically get into this porno because this is all off. You would never be playing that playlist, and uh, you would never be arranged in this way. And come on now. How often do we really try to fit three dicks in one mouth? Not this often. Oh my God. I can't mm -hmm. wait to ask you about that because yes, that's exactly what I want to know. We're going to be talking about how to organize a gangbang today. And this is really important for me because, uh, I am saving my first gangbang for my wedding night. And yeah, so I want my first gangbang to be my wedding night. And it's going to be like five of my favorite black guys. And I'm excited for it. Although I got to find my husband first, but um, I'm I was going to ask, like, are you engaged? Did I miss uh, <laughs> something in the newsletter? <laughs> I'm missing that piece, but anyway, okay. <laughs> um, but I'm really looking forward to it. But I, I have this image in my mind of what it's going to be like, but I really don't know what it's actually going to be like because I haven't done a gangbang before, and I don't even think that like I've watched an actual in person gangbang before and to come to think about it i don't think i've actually watched a gangbang in porn i think i've watched like a few little bits of some but i've never actually watched like start to finish so i'm going to be learning a lot from you today and i'm really excited about this but first i want to talk to you uh talk to you a little bit about your uh your show so if you want to just quickly explain what your podcast is all about other than just going down on five women and them reviewing you <laughs> uh yeah you know 10 years ago i started doing a podcast interviewing my exes about why we didn't work out um these are like ex hookups ex partners ex lovers ex girlfriends and just be like you know, I had this problem where, you know, in my early 20s and in college, you know, women would sleep with me, but they wouldn't date me. And I wanted to know why. So when I was 24, I launched this podcast, like uh, reconnecting with these women and having conversations about that. And they would always branch off into, into discussions about, you know, gender and sexuality and relationships and love and all that stuff. Uh, occasionally, gangbangs is what would come up. And since then, I have expanded, you know, my guest list. I talk to porn stars. I talk to dating experts, comedians, uh, musical artists, uh, cuckoldresses. I, you know, it <laughs> runs the gamut. Uh, I even had on a state senator once. So, you know, but we have uh, I host sex positive conversations every Wednesday. We'll be back after a quick break. Can you believe it's been four years since I first started this podcast? And looking back, I had no idea that this would be my full-time job. I love the work that I do. And it's because of you, the listeners, and your support that I'm able to do this. 
So right now, if you join the Helpful Cuck tier, you get tons of benefits. My favorite ones are the private one-to-one chat every month. You also get access to my private Snapchat group. Weekly live hangouts with me on Crowdcast. I love those. And you get juicy bonus episodes. There's key holding. There's video replays of the Pillow Talk events. And there's also access to my private community on the Moan app. So join right now. You can use the promo code CUCKLOVE2024 for 15% off your Helpful Cuck membership at venuscuckledress.com. And so 10 years, okay, 10 years ago, were podcasts a real big thing? They weren't, right? So you were like they weren't a trailblazer. Big. They weren't big, but like they, there were big podcasts. I launched mine, I want to say like the month, like a year or so before Serial came out. I feel like that was like a big inflection point in podcasting with Serial uh, season one. Uh, but like Mark Marin was already out here. Joe Rogan was out here. Dan Savage was already out here. Um, even, even cunning minx was already doing her poly podcast for years at that point. So I wouldn't call myself a trailblazer, but I was definitely, I think I got in early. Okay. Cause yeah, I, uh, the only ones that I know of that have been around a long time other than you are like Dan Savage. I know he was like one, like he goes way back with podcasting and stuff like that. I guess because I didn't really find podcasts until maybe like five, six years ago, something mm-hmm. like that. So a decade ago, I was like definitely not in the podcast sphere, <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah. it's amazing what you've done and you, you work really hard on it. You, you uh, put out weekly episodes, don't you? Yep. Uh, I've never yeah. missed a Wednesday in 500 plus Wednesdays. That's fucking amazing. Cause like yeah. I, I put out an episode every other week and I find that hard enough, but um, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. That's a lot of work and planning and, and finding guests and, and doing all the preparing and all the editing and everything. And you do it all by yourself or do you have a team? Uh, it, it's just me. The no team. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I I just think that's amazing. So good on you. 500 oh, fucking episodes. You. That's a lot. That thank is amazing. You. Um, What have been some of your most memorable shows? I mean, episode 500 was like really up there. That was that was like a sequel to uh, something I did. Episode 180 was the original oral sex auditions where a, a friend of mine, she was sexually frustrated and complaining about dudes who don't eat pussy. So I said, like let's hold auditions. And like, I, so we just rever- it was the original one was I found five guys to go down on my friend for, I think I gave them all 12 minutes to make a first impression. I yeah. do like pregame, postgame interviews. You know, they come out, they come out of the room, they're sweaty, like LeBron. And I'm just like, okay, so you know, how, how'd the strategy go? Uh, and then after they left, she would tell us how it really went. And of course that becomes like just an overall discussion about like, pleasure and you know the low bar that is for men and and oral sex and and all that stuff um so and that was like my most popular episode for years until i did 500 uh during covid i did a glory hole episode that was fun (laughs) how do you okay i have a question here okay this is legit how do you not get canceled (laughs) uh but no there's no one to cancel me uh there's no you know, Apple, they'll just let you do what you do. I'm not on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, YouTube is pretty strict. Yeah. Um, okay, so I I think that's amazing that you haven't had any pushback like that. That's really good because well, I have... Pa- Patreon, Patreon will give me pushback. Um, oh. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I was, I flagged myself as adult content forever ago back when they introduced that. I thought, oh, I should... You know, this is clearly adult. But then I realized that what they meant, it was for porn. But then it took forever for me to get that tag taken off. So a couple of years ago, I got the tag taken off. I, you know, I deleted a few posts that I needed to, to delete to be in compliance. But I got because and the only reason it matters to me is because you can't search for the Man Whore Podcast Patreon page in the app unless you're already a member. And it, so it's just it's like a barrier to entry for joining. So I get it taken off and then they. uh Last year, they reapplied it. And when I was like, why? And she's like, well, here's one example of adult content you make. And it was my bonus episode for episode 500. And the bonus episode, in their defense, was I just, I took all, okay, 
during that ep- during that oral sex audition episode, I had a microphone next to the bed to capture like those sounds, right? Mm-hmm. And I use them as transitionals because there's a lot of moving pieces in the episode. So in between each one, you're going to hear her moaning or like giving me an instruction or whatever. Uh, so I just did a bonus episode that was all the moans, just the moaning, just all that part. Uh, so it's like an hour of hearing me eat pussy. Uh, <laughs> I, I think you... You can actually hear a squirt like on the waveforms. Like when I'm editing in Audacity, I could see that's that's a squirt, right? That little see that? Uh, yep, that's a squirt sound apparently. Uh in a in a wave format. And so they flagged that because because they were like you're literally just broadcasting sex sounds and I'm like All right, you got me. You got me on that one. <laughs> Dead to rights. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, we can talk about whatever we want on on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and stuff. I think that's a, a really great part about podcasting as uh, as an art form is that you can just there there really isn't a lot of censorship going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's for now. Anyway, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> Knock on I, linoleum. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so oral sex auditions. I absolutely love that. I should do that one day because yeah, I think that the bar is really low. Um, <laughs> I can definitely relate. I actually listened to a clip uh, from from that episode where the chick was talking about how she's like, I will let him die down there trying. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes. She's like, they literally do die sometimes because they suck so bad. <laughs> like, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that woman uh, made me sweat. Like that was just like, I felt like I put in a lot of work. Uh, I, I, le- I left the room and I had to like, I actually iced my forearm. I had to, I grabbed an ice pack. I put it on my left wrist and I, like, cause I, you know, we did them all in one night. So I was like waiting for the next one. I was like, Jesus this is like getting an injury in the second quarter. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Um, okay. So let's talk about how to plan a gangbang. So, um, I yeah, I really want to have a gangbang on my wedding night. I have I don't really know much about it. I I have questions for you. It's so funny because like yes, I've uh, <clears throat> I participated in a a fair amount of gangbangs. I've organized several myself for people who ask. I'm not actually into gangbangs. It's not like my thing. Uh, like I've organized them just because people asked and they were like, I just feel like you could pull this off. And it's like I. I actually could. And let's make it, you know, let's make it happen to the point that now I've kind of got like a little bit of methodology to it. Uh, I, I wrote a 2700 word article for Mashable last year, uh, how to throw a gangbang. It never saw the light of day because it got written. Uh, we fully edited it. They fully paid me for it. And then the editor in chief was arguing with my editor about having the word gangbang in the title. And they kept uh-huh. saying, hey, is there another word we could use? <laughs> No, I asked around. There really isn't. They'd be like, "What about group sex? Different thing. What about a sex party? We that's a they, there. There's no other word for gang bang than gang bang. Yeah, apparently. But yeah, I've, I've apparently got a lot to say on the subject. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey, did you know that there's a one of a kind matchmaking service for cuckolding and female led relationships? Venus Connections is a private service for single men and single women who want a loving, cuckolding relationship. And now there's a new separate FLR program, too. There's no scrolling through profiles or sharing photos with members. It's totally private. And the dates are blind dates, too. Included in the program is a three-week course and an interview with me. So join now at venusconnections.com and use the code Top tier 2024 for 40% off the top 1% membership. That's venusconnections.com. Make 2024 the year that you get the relationship of your dreams. So you started doing gangbangs and you, you came, you said you came up with like a formula that works. Was your first gangbang that you did, was it awkward as fuck or were, what did, was it a great experience? I mean, the first gangbang I attended, I probably was 22 or 23. Uh, and I think it was just like some hotel room in, uh, in like downtown Brooklyn. It was weird. Yeah, I think the, it was actually the first time a dude like has like touched my dick because like I'm about to go enter the wife and then the husband like kind of like 
grab my cock to like guide it in. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, I guess he doesn't want me to miss. Like, what's going? <laughs> um, <laughs> you might actually be able to offer something into that. Is there anything like in like cuckolding culture where like the guy, like the husband or whoever, is like helping the cock fuck his wife? Is that like part of yeah, it? Yeah. That- yeah, that's a thing. It's basically very symbolic. It's like, okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna help make this happen for uh, her, kind of thing. But he didn't ask you. He didn't ask you first. I would have liked the warning. I would have liked, like, in the emails, because there are a lot of emails. I think, I think a well organized gangbang has a fair number of emails with instructions, and I feel like that could have been included. Of, uh, hey, yeah. I might hold your penis briefly as you get close, so I can put it in her. Um, yeah. but you know, we, we survived it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I actually it... remember straddling her face to like put my dick in her mouth at one point, And I was like, self-conscious, like, Oh God, like, I hope like my ass doesn't smell too much. Like I feel <laughs> like, I hope like it's not gnarly back there that it was like, I remember farting like three hours prior. And I guess I'm just like, I was like worried. I'm like shoving all that smell into her face, but yeah, she seemed to have a good time. <laughs> It's funny the things we think about when we're in these different positions and stuff. I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, okay. And how many, but how many guys were in that situation? That hotel room? I, I don't know. I think it was a little bit of a revolving door thing. Like people would kind of okay. come in and come out. But like there were probably about like a dozen dudes, I would say. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And so it, I want to know this first and foremost Gang bangs, what you see in porn, okay, so she's like in the center of it all and you've got these guys all around and they're like, you know, beating their meat and waiting for their turn and and she's just like, oh my God, this is amazing. I got so many dicks everywhere and they're everywhere and I'm doing all this stuff. Is it very, is it all performative like that when you actually have a, a gang bang? Is it like that or is this really about everyone having pl- – uh, pleasure during this experience you know one of the most unrealistic things about a gangbang porno is that there's never like in the background two dudes who already went and they're just talking about the game (laughs) okay for the fact that no like there's you can't kind of hear in the background it's like yeah and i hear the steelers are going to take russell wilson that's that that's not in the video makes it not real to me okay because there's a lot more socializing happening uh (laughs) usually than uh than is than is depicted uh i think every gangbang can be different i I think it all depends on what that central figure uh wants uh technically anyone can be gangbanged anyone of any gender can be gangbanged i'm gonna say a lot of she her just because like that's kind of the context of like i feel like you're seen but like yeah like any anyone can be gangbanged it's just i think gangbang is where there's a central um central star you know, she the, a, a certain leading person who's going to be the recipient of all this penetration. Uh, but yeah, so it, I think it depends on what she wants. <clears throat> um, when I have had women ask me to organize these events for them, uh, one of the first questions I ask is like, if you had to pick a vibe word, like what's a word that describes the vibe of what you want? Right. That's going to give me an idea of like how we should set this up, what it should look like, what it should sound like. You know, are, are lights on or lights dim or lights completely off? Are you blindfolded? Or are you not blindfolded? Uh, like one woman wanted to be blindfolded because she wanted to then be able to walk around New York City. And if somebody kind of looked at her funny because she has got a really distinct hair hairstyle, uh, she wanted to be able to think, have I fucked that person? Are they looking <laughs> at me because they know they've had sex with me? Right. And then I invite one. I invite one friend, uh, a chick with a strap on. So that way it's like everybody was suspect. So depending on like what it is she wants out of the out of the experience will determine like again how social or whatever the uh, the event is and and what the vibe is. Is there like a good number of guys to have the like for each woman or? Like, I mean, I think is- it de- again it depends on on what she wants, what the vibe, what's the like. One woman wanted me to invite a lot because her. The, her vibe word was challenge. She wanted to see how many can I actually take before I tap out, right? Okay. So I think I, I think I reserved like twenty seven dudes for that one. Not all of them showed up. A lot of them actually bailed. But like 
I, so I think we ended up with like 16, 17 who came through, but like, I think I reserved close to 30 because she, that, because that's what she wanted. Others. It's like, mm, I think like five is already going to be plenty. Um, and then also I think that depends on your body, you know, what can your vagina take? You, you know, your pussy better than I do. And also like size, like what kind of size dicks do you want? Do you want to have like, do you want to have five dudes who are all like at least six, seven inches? Or do you just want to, do you want to have like 20 or 15 and there's, but they're all sorts of shapes and sizes. So you can you can take it all right like do you want to take 25 inch sticks or do you want to take five nine inch sticks like these are the questions one has to think when they're not trying to get a real job you know right okay so and as far as like timing and stuff goes like i feel like in porn everybody comes all at the same time basically at the end right i mean or something like how does it work? I mean, work? unless it's like a, an experimental porno, we usually want like a nice linear timeline, right? It's uh, yeah. It'd be weird if it was like the Tarantino thing. It's like everybody comes on her in the front, and then we see how did that occur? You know, it's yeah. then we flash back. Uh, you know, I, again, everything ends up being to her customization. But yeah, like typically they're coming in the middle and at the end. I mean, some people want like a bukkake. Where they yeah. want like they want a bunch of people to come on them, and, and it, it's almost like an event. And some, it's uh, but very often, and it's also practically helpful. Is you just you come when you're ready to come, mm-hmm. and you, that ways you can also tap yourself out. It's how we can get new people in. So you know, unless you have a particular preference, usually I, I notice that guys will just kind of they finish when they're ready to finish. Okay, and so is there a rule about like you? You you don't come inside her because there's other guys that still have to fuck her kind of thing. That's the is that like a rule in game banks or think of like almost any rule. It's just gonna it's it's gonna be to you know what she wants. If somebody doesn't want and I mean I you know I mean also like we're using when you say come inside of like I do you mean like bareback or do you mean yeah like, yeah, like, yeah 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 I mean like I haven't been part of a cream pie gangbang because oh, I did one. That's right. I did one. I didn't finish during it. That was my, that was probably my worst showing I've ever done. I just like, I, I you know, it was weird. Cause I flew out for my friends. Like I forget what birthday it was, but like I flew out in 2021 to Sacramento for her like birthday gangbang. And we all like did the testing and prearranged to, um, to do that. And then I just, you know, couldn't, couldn't go that day. It was, uh, it's oh. like, Ty- is Tyreek Hill going to be in the game? And it's like game time decision. And I just like, like I technically, fucked her but and came inside her but like it was very brief as in like hey i've achieved the erection let's just let me and technically i was the only one the fucker like everybody had a bad showing like it was not a great gangbang um like we were all i think yeah it was it was a little bit of an odd one but uh yeah i think the rules for that were to like come inside her when you were ready i think that was kind of the idea it was like we all knew what we were getting into but typically, okay. uh, you know, we're using condoms. And so typically you just you come when you come. It doesn't matter if you come inside her or not. I think the only time it matters is, is if she has a request where it's, hey, I want you to come on me. So please don't come when you're fucking me. You know, that that would be one uh, alteration I could imagine. Is that like, is it easy for guys to plan it like that? Like, or is that a lot of pressure to get it right? What, to plan like pulling like, out to come on someone yeah I mean, I just feel like, like when and where to come and everything like <laughs> for, like for centuries scripted. we've been pulling out right and so <laughs> think of all the porn in the 60s they pull out and they come on them right that I, we, we know when we're about to bust so okay i'm just like I, and is there a lot of pressure for guys who attend a gangbang is there a lot of pressure for them to like i don't know perform well just not just for her but like to for the boys like, yeah to look for like the, i don't want to seem lame job. in front of the guys yeah <laughs> is there is there that yeah it's like jim's not gonna let me in his fancy football league if i don't do a good job here uh yeah it i think um when recruiting for a gangbang i do think it's it's important to have a mixture of experience levels i mean somebody might want only experienced people because they're like maybe they don't have the patience for anything else but you're going to want some people who are really comfortable for when the guys who are a little more tepid 
uh, are having a hard time. Like you need someone who's going to kick it off. <clears throat> you need someone who can tap in pretty reliably because, uh, you know, you're going to have some new people. And this is, you know, for some guys, it's going to be their very first gangbang. For some guys, it's going to be the first time having group sex or seeing another penis in person like that. Right. <clears throat> so I think it's good to, like, make sure you have a couple of ringers in there, like where you're like, I know I'm going to get fucked if like a lot of dudes get shy. I have a, uh, the the friend who wanted to be blindfolded. She had an ex forever ago, uh, try to arrange her a gangbang. And then like when they were all in the room, it was like three other dudes. They were all like really nervous. They were all really new. None of them could get hard. They were all really shy. They all kept like kissing and touching and playing with her pussy. But like none of them like would fuck. And right. so eventually like the the boyfriend who arranged it had to fuck her in front of these guys and then just sent them all home, which is like really disappointing, right? Like you think I'm gonna get overwhelmed with all this cock. And then it's like, well, it's just the one cock and then an audience, (laughs) which is the one cock that I know really well. And (laughs) I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be hot for people if that's the scene you want, but that's not the scene you put together, right? You want to get fucked by a bunch of people. You didn't want to get, you didn't want to fuck in front of a bunch of people. So uh, definitely make sure you have, some experience in the room for sure and how long do gangbangs usually last for i legitimately don't know the answer to this <laughs> how long do you think you can get pounded for yeah that my pussy used to be such a champ she's a weak little bitch these days real fucking disappointment so <laughs> yeah i don't that, know I mean- Definitely good to keep the lube around. You know, there's definitely a lot of moments where like someone calls out lube and then like there's like three guys scrambling around looking for the lube and no, that's a cuck job. That's That's a cuck cuck job. job. Yeah. Well, if there's a cucky (laughs) gangbang, I haven't really been a part of those. But yes, that would definitely be a cuck job if we had like that uh, that designated fella there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He he would have the lube, the towels, the get me a drink, like whatever you need, that kind of thing. Yeah, you'd probably I would probably need like the Costco size lube um for that. But yeah, no, I for longevity, like I guess some women can just keep going and going and going. Yeah. Maybe some women don't want to keep going and going and going, but like I'm just like is there some with the with the guys, do you guys talk about this beforehand or does do you just know automatically or with a new guy, do you explain to him like usually you just you only fuck her for like a few minutes and then it's someone else's turn. You got to like hand off, you know, or I don't know. How does I mean, it work there, like that? If there's space for us to like be talking, then yeah, like I've definitely had guys say like, oh, it's my first time, like. Any any tips, any suggestions, whatever like that. But again, it just depends. Like that hotel room, there wasn't going to be any discussion. It was you enter in quietly, undress, and get in there when you're ready. And so, you know, good luck. And then there's other times where um, we all met up for drinks beforehand with the woman um, nearby. Like that was kind of part of the thing was you had to meet at this bar. And we all kind of like stood in a circle and we were talking about our previous experience before we and got to know each other before we all went up to this apartment to fuck her for like an hour. Uh, and when he was speaking to the time, I think, you know, anywhere from a half hour to an hour is like probably how long it will last about, uh, okay. you know, and like with breaks. Right. Like sometimes it's sometimes she like raises her hand and says, hey, I need a break or I need to use the bathroom real quick or if your headspace goes in a certain direction, you might need like a few minutes to just like collect yourself. And maybe you need to talk to your master or your dom or your husband or whatever and, and say, okay, well, and then, and then you reenter. Um, so, so length of time can include like breaks and stuff like that in terms okay. of like the guys talking to each other. Yeah. Like it, it just depends on how it's set up. Uh, there was a blow bang. So again, not a gang bang. This was just blow jobs, but this one had like, uh there's probably like 20 of us about and so there was a bedroom and then there was like a bigger like living room ish type of space and most of us are in that living room like you're only in there when it's your group's turn they they had us draw cards so uh (laughs) just to get us into some groupings and yeah so like we weren't in that room when it wasn't our turn so when we're out there we're hanging out we're having a drink we're talking to each other you know, about the game or about tips for a gangbang, whatever. Um, and then eventually be like, okay, you know, clubs get in there, you know, and then, then, <laughs> then it's our turn to, to get to work. Uh, then sometimes you get to know a dude real well, uh, that, that blow bang, like at one point she wanted to, there were two women involved. <clears throat> 
blowing all of us. So this one woman was blowing me and this other guy and then wanted to get us both into her mouth at the same time, which like she asked, like, can I do that? And we were like, sure. Uh, but then I required us to get quite close. And there's a man I, yeah. I don't even think I know his name or I just learned his name. Like as like my dick went in her mouth, he said, and I'm John. Right. And then, but we had to get like real close, hip to hip, like, you know, arms around each other's shoulders, just, <laughs> just so that we can fit both our dicks in her mouth at the same time. Uh, so yeah, you, you make new friends. He and I are married now. So, uh, okay. All right. Been <laughs> together I think uh, 17 years. It so, <laughs> feels like it. <laughs> it's so funny how a lot of guys get really, really weird about like the touching body parts with another man and like yeah. it's like oh my god the, i'm i'm crossing a boundary here like what i don't but like know it I is don't... you know think about it. it is crossing a boundary if you've never had that experience before and if you've thought about like sexuality in a very certain way which like a lot of i think at least my country like you know views things so you know if it's someone's first time yeah it's gonna be jarring when that guy grabbed my dick to put it in his wife like sensationally it like I'm not, I don't want to say alarm bells. I want to say just like pings went off. Like this is different new sensation and also something I wasn't expecting and something I don't, I'm not supposed to associate it with pleasure and I'm associating it with pleasure because I'm entering his wife, which feels great. But like, right. I did just have a man's hand on my dick for like, a, of like three seconds, which just f- felt sensationally different. Right. And then the first time, like I shared a mouth with another guy yeah, that felt like, oh, my dick is touching another dick in this mouth, and that's new and different. So, yeah. you know, I I think I think it's about how can a guy go shake it off and go, okay, cool. And and look, the world didn't end. Everything's yeah. fine. Let's continue enjoying the experience. Or does someone get in their head and get really freaked out and then like needs to leave the room and journal? Right. And it, it, you know, that's definitely at play too. Right. Let's just be chill about it. But it is in their defense, like it is different. Like it is a different sensation. You're on, you're not, it is crossing a boundary uh, or crossing swords. Like it's, it's definitely new. Crossing swords. Yes. I've heard of yeah. that before. Yes, yeah. Yes. It's interesting to me. Okay. What not to do during a gangbang? What, what are the big fucking red flags where you're like, do not do this? Ooh, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I was in between, rounds i i had gone once i was like waiting to go another time so i went to go you know drink water check my phone and uh right on my my alert screen on my phone new york times notification said that barbara walters died and i had to fight everything to not blur out to everybody oh my god barbara walters died right don't do that (laughs) first off it's a good start (laughs) uh don't not shower right like clean wash your ass don't be the smelly guy uh you don't want to do that uh don't be pushy i mean a lot of these don'ts like the reversals are just really good tips like listen like read the emails in full or the instructions in full uh don't push boundaries ask for things that haven't been covered if they're things that you want i've um i've sometimes had to ask like if because and especially because i think swingers or or in gang like these can when there's a couple involved it can sometimes be touchy but like I love kissing. So sometimes I've had to ask, like, is kissing okay? Because if right. they didn't cover it and I know I want to do it, then I should ask for it. I should not assume I can just go ahead and do that. Right. Uh just because you like you shouldn't go stick a thumb in someone's butt if we haven't covered the butt stuff. Right. You should ask. You say, like, can I put a finger in your butt? Or if if everything's left to him, because some a lot of women want to be kind of mindless in the situation. You want to be lost in the pleasure and they kind of um hand uh delegate the responsibilities to some sort of overseer so you might ask him can i put a thumb in her butt but you know it's like be conscientious in that way um so be you know so while you're being selfish because you should be a little selfish it is a gangbang you're just fucking uh you should also like remember to be thoughtful and considerate of others um so wash i said that uh don't show up drunk and oh, fucked yeah. up don't be or, fucked up. Yeah. Don't be fucked up. Like that up. goes for most sexual situations, but especially this. It's it's like we had someone vomit at a gangbang once and it was weird. I mean, not in front of us. They went to the bathroom. But then like I went to the bathroom after and then I looked in the, in the and I before I went, I looked in the toilet and it was just like full of, 
oh. gross, right? Yeah. Because like now I got to go back in and get turned on again. Ugh. <laughs> oh, nasty. You know, I think uh, and and don'ts for you know, and for the person, for the central person, for the for the superstar, right? I think a, a, a don't would be to like don't tr- don't put other expectations on the scene other than your own. Don't think, oh, I had all these people came out and and so I'm feeling this way, uh, but I shouldn't because like they all came out and so I should just take it, whether it's because they're too sore and they need to stop or they need a break. Or if they don't want to do anal, but some guy's like really saying he wants to do anal or um, whatever it may be. It's like, remember that you're the most important person in the room. Um, you call all the shots and we are all there to ideally listen to and follow your directions. And yeah, like sometimes people get sore, people get tired and the thing is done before everyone got to go. And that's just fucking life. And like these guys will, they'll deal with it. It'll be okay. Um, sometimes people will be like, I think I'm done fucking. So like, if you want to come on me right now, like I might help you out a bit with my mouth, but we're like the pussy's closed for business, uh, or my knees are tired, whatever it is. Uh, don't be afraid to like ask to change positions, right? Just, I think, uh, gosh, if there's, I think we, a lot of women feel so deferential to men sexually in a gangbang. It's so many men and that some might amplify the def being deferential. No, no, no. This is, they're all your sex toys. Like this is your time to call all the shots and don't be shy about it. You're not a bitch. You're not frigid. You're not whatever. It's like, this is your scene. Um, I think that's really important for them to, to remember. I love that advice so much because yeah, I could definitely see how it would be slightly overwhelming for me to be in that position of feeling like I need to like pleasure all of these guys and make sure that they all come and that they all have this amazing experience when I'm like, I should just get that out of my head and just it, mm-hmm. be like, this is about me. <laughs> like, yes, it's, it's you <laughs> getting these guys off, but it's for your pleasure. Like the pleasure at the end of the day that matters the most is yours. Yeah. So even when you're thinking I'm supposed to pleasure all these guys, but you're only supposed to, because that's what you wanted. And it's okay. If all of a sudden you stop wanting that. Yeah, And whether that means you need to end the scene entirely and say, hey, y'all, I think I'm good tonight. Or if you just need to take a time out and be like, hey, I need a little break. Uh, can someone get me water? I'm going to use the bathroom. And then we'll get yeah. like, again, just don't be shy about that. I, I, I yeah. can't stress that enough. Yeah. Great advice. OK, so you've participated in a bunch of gangbangs and um it's how, funny how, you say a bunch, by the way, because like I don't think of it as a bunch, but like so, for society standards, yeah, 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 it's like because <laughs> they measure it. The, the, the society measures gangbangs as one gangbang, two gangbangs, three gangbangs, and then so many gangbangs. Like there is no yep. number after three. It's just wow, you went to a bunch. Yep. <laughs> but yes, I, I've I've been to my fair amount. So have like have you noticed that there's important things about setting the mood or important things about being prepared as far as the environment and the atmosphere goes. I'm assuming there's going to be important things like making sure that you have towels nearby, that you have, I don't know, drinks or that the lighting is nice. Or are there any other tips that you can give people who are planning their first gangbang where they might not think, oh, I should I should do that. This would be a good idea to set it up this way. Yeah. Again, everything is customizable, but the things to think about to be like, how do I want that aspect done? It's yeah. Things like what kind of lighting do we want? Do we want to be blindfolded or not? Um, playlist. There's you, like, no, you don't want to do a gangbang to silence. That's <gasps> oh, yeah. disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get a playlist put together. You can search gangbang and find gangbang playlists on Spotify. My, I, I had a, what? <laughs> I, I had somebody who wanted a gangbang. She like had a friend make her a playlist for the gangbang, right? So there's, <laughs> but you do want to consider that um, orientation of the room. Um, you know, if this was something more blow bangy, like where it's going to be blow jobs, okay, that could be anywhere because we might be on our knees. But it's like, do we want to be on the couch or bed? Uh, I remember. The, the the one the night Barbara Walters died, you know, never forget, rest in peace. Um, but, the, you know, it was like we started on the couch with her. Eventually, it moved into this bedroom. 
And then later it moved back out and, you know, onto the couch, uh, depending on like, you know, what positions you want to be in. Uh, you want to think through, yeah, things like towels, having lube nearby, like within right. arm's distance of somebody, uh, w- making sure you have water or your beverage of choice nearby, probably both. Again, you, you know, you also shouldn't get too fucked up. Um, have some Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some sort of, be- you know, because that's going to happen. You know, bitch going to get thirsty at some point. <laughs> um, what else uh, you want to consider? Uh, I I think uh, the, in terms of like safety parameters, you want to like really get an idea of one, like what are the boundaries you want to set up? Yeah. Uh, what are what are the rules you want to put in place? Also protocols for that. Like I think the traffic light system is really good. I think that's like a real simple one, but whether it's traffic light or, uh, you know, going yellow, red, green, uh, or just a safe word of some sort, uh, you want to plan that out in advance. And I do think it's really important if you're having a gangbang, I do not care how confident of a bad bitch you are. You should have like, like a gangbang chaperone. Oh, that can cuck. be a, a cuck, a cuck. <laughs> I, I guess I imagine everyone here is probably using a cuck for this, but that can be like kind of anybody. But it, you know, there should be a person who's there for your safety and to like tend to your needs, which, yeah, is very cucky. But there are people who I just because I'm not a cuck. So I just want to I'm I want to make I'm when I organize the game things like I'm fucking too. Um, (laughs) Just to be clear for a moment. Uh, So so you need to get like you want to get on the same page with that person, because when you let go, they're in charge and you need to be able to trust that they can handle the situation uh, because you want to really let go. You don't want to have to think about anything. You don't want to have to think about, is this guy about to cross a boundary? Is, 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 um, is this guy too fucked up? Is something you just want someone who can like, you know, kind of coach the thing uh, once it's going on. So that's also, I think really important aftercare. I think is a good thing to plan out. Like, what are you going to do afterwards? Like after all the dudes leave, whether that's right. everybody or everybody except your cuck, it's like, what's afterwards? Like, what's going to make you feel good? Maybe you need to get a schedule massage for afterwards. Maybe you uh, want to just have a really good bubble bath with some candles. Like, maybe you want to get stoned and watch a movie. But, like, maybe get an idea of, like, what is it, like, I'm going to want? Like, is there going to be a comfort food that you're going to want to be able to just, like, devour once everybody's out? And, okay, yeah. cool. We want to make sure that's that's stocked, whatever is needed. Yes, snacks. 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 Maybe not during the gangbang. Like nobody needs to get, you know, uh cheese it fuzz in someone's pussy. But you know, I think <laughs> I think that's a, a good to have maybe for after. But yeah, I, I don't think as many people think about after the gangbang what mm. one needs. Again, it, not just that in that way, but also mentally is like there are you if it's particularly kinky, maybe if you go into some subspace, is there someone there who's gonna be able to help bring you down and and hold you and make sure you're you're all set? Um so these are things to keep in mind. I'm so glad that you brought that up because um, with the my gangbang on my wedding night, this was going to be like hardcore angsty for my cuck, obviously, because it's her wedding night and I'm fucking all these other dudes in front of him. And it's just very symbolic. But aftercare, I hadn't thought about that. But that is something I'm going to need to plan into all yeah. of this. And the nice thing about having like a cuckold gangbang is that like your cuck is there to be with you afterwards and is there to clean up, mm. clean up the room, clean up your pussy, like clean it all up. Clean up the dicks <laughs> if that's if that's the way they go. Yeah, that's his job. So sure. so that's wonderful. But I love, you know, what you said about having somebody there to make sure that you can just turn off your mind and enjoy and not have to worry about stuff. I was at a hotel takeover party last year and I did a, a reverse uh, glory hole, which is where, Love that. right? It's where the women either lay down or bend over and they have the curtain come down on their waist. And so I had to have a gatekeeper there with me because I was like, I'm not just allowing just any fucking dudes to walk up and like I'm no, I need somebody to like manage this shit. My manager. So how okay? how did you how did you kind of decide which which strangers were going to get to engage with your body parts that were exposed? I didn't, but I had uh, my friend Doc Chocolate, who's host of the Bulls and Queens yeah. podcast. He was there with me, and so he was like the guy that stood next to me and was like, you know, instructing the guys 
on, okay. on what to do and stuff. And so that was good. And I wouldn't have had it any other way. Like you just, you need somebody there who's going to like hold the condoms and the lube and make sure everything goes well. But there even is logistically, the- you just need, yeah, it's like, that's even just, you just sometimes just need an extra body who can do certain, th- who can open the door because yes. somebody's late. Yeah. Although I think if yes. you're late, you shouldn't get to go to the gangbang. That's my personal opinion. If yes. I see the door, the, 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 the hotel door is going to be open from eight to eight fifteen. at eight sixteen, it will be closed. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. oh, dude, the subway was running behind. I don't know, but it, you are if uh, being on time means being five minutes early. That's how I was raised. Yes, absolutely. Um, but there is something really erotic about getting fucked by people and not knowing who those people were. So oh, when yeah. you talk to you about your story about the woman who was blindfolded, that was fun, actually. The sex, you know, is not like it's not like you go in a reverse gangbang or reverse glory hole. To, for the sex, you do it for the fascination of not being able to see anything of yeah. the person, right? And so being able to walk around afterwards and like not, I'd be like, did I fuck you? Like, did I fuck you? Was it you? <laughs> like, it's yeah. kind of fun. It's thrilling like that. But so I can understand where putting a blindfold on during that whole thing would be super, super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but also very important for me to actually like be familiar with these guys who are going to be in my first gangbang, ha- knowing them really well. They know me really well. And then hopefully they know each other too. That would be ideal. So there's that. But um, I think honestly, there needs to be more of more gangbangs where it's women fucking a guy. Uh, I agree. We should start by planning mine and we can <laughs> test it out from there. <laughs> No, but um, this is the the catch. Uh, women pegging the guy. I need to start with my first pegging first, but which I'm also <laughs> saving for love. But uh, one then sure. Yeah, I think this like needs to be a thing because I saw something on Instagram uh, yesterday where it said something like there was some research study that found that over sixty percent of guys are silently secretly hoping that they can be anally penetrated oh, and okay. i'm like yes uh and what, secretly I or yeah that they, they they won't I don't say think, it I don't think i'm part of that 60 percent uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but i'm like okay i really do feel like guys would really enjoy being pegged and it doesn't make you gay i don't care what anybody says it is simply just about pleasure and it is a great experience for guys it's a great experience for women i've never thought i would like pegging but i fucking love it but Mm. i think that maybe there should be some cuck gangbangs and if i had a cuck i would definitely do that i would get all my girlfriends together we would gangbang this dude like it would be we would peg the fuck out of him it would be so fun actually that would be really great i'm getting all of these ideas <laughs> but i think that needs to be more of a thing because yes i like i understand that gangbangs are focused about like one usually you said before yeah. it could be anybody any gender yeah. but you know a lot of times important is like one woman and she's kind of being like overwhelmed by all this dick and it's about and that's really like the energy mm-hmm. but can we like flip the script a little bit and have the guy be like overwhelmed by all of this, like big pussy energy and yeah, like, you please. know, <laughs> please. So long as they'll, they'll, they'll all kiss me on the mouth and call me pretty at some point. Like, yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Help me put that together. <laughs> I think that would be amazing. We need to like make this an actual thing. What if that was um, the first time I did pegging though? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah. You should make a podcast episode about it. I don't know if I got to be that public about it. Like, my father is still alive, so it's... Oh, now you're shy about that, that one thing. (laughs) Everything else doesn't matter, but... You know, we do share a Google alert. We have the same name. (laughs) I think you should do an episode about it, losing your ass virginity. I think that would be great. I, you know, look, my last girlfriend, I thought would, if, if I thought, Hey, I think this is the woman I'm going to finally have peg me. And then, uh, you know, that didn't work out. I just want the first one to be with someone like, I mean, it's, it's like, I'm a, 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 
kind of religious 16 year old girl where I'm like, no, I just want my first, my, the first one. I want the first one to mean something. The rest don't, but the first one should be special. And I, I would, I, I, I would like the first time I, I get, I do pegging to be with someone like I care about that's intimate, who loves yeah. me. But like, if not that, what you described, not a bad backup. <laughs> like I'm open to that. If somebody wants to put together four ish women to, to peg me, all at once, I think I'd be able to to scratch the original plan for that. Yeah, I love it. I well, there's definitely an art to taking a guy's ass virginity. I've learned this from Ruby Ryder. She's an amazing amazing educator when it comes to like pegging and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so there's there's an art to it, but. It's and I cannot totally understand why you would want it to be with somebody who you you know it's soft and tender and loving and everything like that because a lot of what you see in porn with pegging is like I'm gonna fucking break your ass open you little bitch you know <laughs> so. oh yeah see see I'm not little bitch type of energy I'm like uh, I want to be an equal while I'm on my knees so yeah I yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah no I, I I and I don't think even once I get in the peg I don't know how much I'm gonna be into like yeah fuck me I think I want to be made love to uh we'll see um <laughs> venus is like mine might be a little bit bigger it might be a little bit rougher and you know it's fine to have one of those you gotta have one of those in the lineup right <laughs> like if i had if i look if i lost my pegging virginity in a gangbang i feel like it would have to be uh a lot a lot of babes with with small with, with thinner sorry it's not about length right it's about the width so i would yeah. i need some mostly thinner but like you, know, you gotta have like one girthy one in there you know just for good measure, just to <laughs> just to surprise you, just to make you go, whoa. <laughs> okay. I I think you would really love it, but anyway, keep me posted on how that that goes. Um, we're we're pretty much all out of time for this really fun episode on gangbang planning. So I really appreciate you coming on. I've learned so so much about this because, like I said, I didn't. I I really don't know that much about it. So I appreciate that you've shared all of your helpful tips and experiences <laughs> with me regarding that. Um, where can people? Find more information about you, listen to your show, all that good stuff. Sure. Uh, you can find the Man Whore Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can go to manwhorepod.com. Uh, I am on Instagram at Billy is Presida. I'm on TikTok at the Billy Presida. That's P R O C I D A. Uh, and in New York City, if you're in the New York City area, I run a monthly naked comedy show in Brooklyn. Uh, it's very fun. Uh, we do two shows a night every month. Uh, next ones are March 22nd and April 26th. Uh, and you can also, again, find information about that at uh, manwhorepod.com. Yeah, I've seen your naked uh, comedy shows. And, well, I've seen them censored. <laughs> And I love how you do the big sensor down in the middle of your legs like this. You're censoring something that's hanging real low. <laughs> I want you to think that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you crack me up, Billy. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the show today. I have had such a great time with you. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. That's where you can book a private chat with me. You can check out any cuckolding events that might be happening. And you can even ask a question for the show as well as, of course, join the Queen's Quarters fan club and get all the benefits for that. You can also follow me on Instagram, the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. I haven't been banned there. Well, I have, but not recently. (laughs) You can also follow me on Twitter or whatever the fuck you want to call it. My handle is at V. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, then you know I've talked about a really, really amazing sexual activity other than cuckolding, and it's called sensual massage. Now, I've received this a few times, and it is fucking mind-blowing. 
I'm a huge fan, but I there just hasn't been any kind of place for guys to learn how to do it. Not that I knew of anyway. Until now, <laughs> I came across this video, this sensual massage video that is on xoafterglow.com, which is a pretty cool site. It is porn that is meant to be real educational, entertaining, of course, um, but really cool, made by women and lots of different kinds of porn as well. So I found this video on there and I was like, oh my God, yay. It's really hot. It's this real couple. And he's actually in the beginning of the video, learns how to do the massage. He's obviously watching some sort of instructions. He talks to his wife about it and um, she's on the massage table and he gives her an amazing sensual massage. Now it's not as long as I would like as far as length of time, but the video is great and I'm so happy to see it. It's really hot. It's really sexy and it just mm, presses all the buttons for me. <laughs> So if you want to check it out, you should go to exoafterglow.com. And right now, if you enter the code Venus, you can actually get one week of uh, free access to it, a free trial. So that's exoafterglow.com. Enter the code Venus. And the link for that, if you are not going to be able to remember, is in the show notes for today. Enjoy!